think the, the main mes message is really jump <laughs> for women. Uh, we summarized at the end, we had a, a discussion, a debate, and uh, so we were asked to uh, bring, give some messages. And um, the major messages are believe in what you are doing. If you see, if you want to go somewhere, know what, what you want to do, why you want to do it, and how you want to do it. And don't hesitate. A lot of women don't take the opportunities, because a lot of women have opportunities in our society. Girls go to schools, to universities, I mean in our societies, not in, in other countries. But we are lucky here that we have these opportunities. And uh, I'm teaching at the university, I'm working in university hospital, I'm a medical doctor, gynecologist. What we see is that girls actually in university, often they do better than boys. But the problem is that after graduation, then, you know, somewhere their career blocks. And that's because most of the girls then have children. They try to combine their uh, family with, with their professional life, with their career. And the problem with a lot of girls and women is that they want to do everything perfect. So they want to be the perfect housewife and the perfect mother and the perfect professional, which is hard to combine. So I think girls have to, to choose to go for it and also to show leadership. Once they are in a leading position, to make sure that they really show that leadership and that they, they, they jump, they jump in the, they take the occasions. Uh, if they see something, grab the occasion, don't hesitate. If you are convinced that it is what you really want and uh, go for it. I think that was a summary of the major messages. When I started medicine, it was very difficult for a girl to be accepted at university. In 1990, uh, in 1970, when I want, 1978, when I wanted to do gynecology, I was told gynecology and obstetrics as a specialty. I was told that this is not a specialty for women. Uh, and in 98, I was the first female professor in gynecology in Belgium, Netherlands, and Luxembourg. So this is not that long ago. That means that we, that there are still a, a lot of steps to be taken. And if you look at the workplaces, for example, like the university, there are a lot of women employed at university. They do a, a wonderful job. They are very performant. But if you look at the higher levels, it's less than 5% are full professors. So there is still a lot of efforts are needed to give women a chance to develop, to an equal chance to develop their careers. And I think we should be supportive. If you compare Belgium to other countries, we are not, we are doing quite well. Uh, uh, looking at all the, first of all, at the public opinion. Here it is very well accepted that a woman combines her career with her family life. In Germany, for example, it's already more difficult. Here also we have a lot of supporting mechanisms. We have uh, kindergarten, we have opportunities for uh, women to, to combine, but women should be more demanding and really take these chances and not think, well, you know, I do a lot and there it stops. No, they can do better. They can reach higher and, 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 and also show that uh, leadership. Another advice that I would like to give to young women is that um, don't think that it will just uh, fall out of, come out of the blue. What I mean by that is that a lot of women, they work hard, they are very performant, they do sometimes better than their male colleagues. And they, um, they but they don't like PR and they don't like um, networking. That's something like, they think it's not needed. They feel like if I do my work, my boss or my, um, my job uh, environment will uh, recognize my capacities. And they will say, well, we take this girl for promotion because she is doing very well. That's not enough. It's, you, you need to be the best or one of the best, that is for sure. But you also have to believe in yourself and to make sure that um, um, you convince the others of your good capacities. And I think that's what we have to develop more than, than ever before. We have a network of women and men with representatives of all faculties because we feel that not enough is being done by our university right now. So we are enforcing a network uh, to propose to the university management to take some measures. And that means that more flexibility in uh, career development, that um, women can also choose to step out for 
part-time or full-time for a year, for example, without losing their opportunities to make a university career. Um, and there are a number of messages that, that we are trying to bring to young women. And I think we are, we are we are also trying to introduce quota that after, because there is enough potential, there is enough talent. Um, maybe 20 years ago you could say, well, you know, they, they, they are just uh, taken on board or they are selected because they are women. This is not true anymore. There, is so, there are so many talented women and men and we should just do more to make sure more flexibility, more possibilities to work at home, for example. To a lot of women, uh, if they have young children, they want to go home early, but then they are willing to continue to do some desk work uh, at home and to work uh, via email and internet, and that should be um, endorsed officially by the university. And we should have very clear objectives and criteria, and we should measure or indicate things there. To quota. Yeah. Why? Because, uh, as I said uh, just five minutes ago, I think it's important for, um, you know, if we wouldn't have had this quota on in politics, for example, in academics, uh, in enterprise, um, the progress towards uh, gender diversity and equality for men and women would have been lower than it is now. And quota, being in favor of quota doesn't mean that you take women who are less good than men, the problem is that very often, or the, the, the truth is that very often women are better than men, but it's not recognized by themselves in the first place and by, by their environment. So we need quota and we need to convince women that they can do very well, that they have to go for elections, for example, that they have to go to make their career in the university, that they can do it. Um, I was, um, last month, uh, I got uh, from the British Medical Journal a Lifetime Achievement Award and one of the questions was, are you happy to be a woman and why? And I said, yes, because women are a sound mix of uh, wisdom, beauty, strength and love and they deserve to be supported. And this is a call also not only to think about our own societies, because if you look at our three feministic waves that we had and, uh, in the past. And if you look at the chances that women have right now, of course there is still a lot to be done and there is room for improvement. But I spent most of my time working in, in Africa. And we should not forget our African sisters. We should not leave out women in developing countries because they have still a much longer way to go, but we should learn from our history, from our past from what we are doing now, we should also, you know, reach out worldwide and not only think about Belgium or Europe, uh, but think about women and, and fight for women all over the globe.